Ahoy hoy YouTube, this is Michaela from Team Retrogue, where we like retro games, we like roguelikes, and we like the devices that bring them to us. But wait a minute, this is neither a retro game or a roguelike. What is this sorcery? Yes, this is me playing Horizon Zero Dawn on a Nintendo Switch. Now a couple things about this, Horizon Zero Dawn is a PS4 game, not a Nintendo Switch game. So... What magic are we performing here? Well, we are actually running Android 10 on a modded Nintendo Switch, and we are using PS4 Remote Play, and it's working surprisingly well. Now, I know Horizon Zero Dawn is neither a retro game, nor is it a roguelike. However, our tapping into this spellbook of witchcraft and wizardry will allow us to bring roguelikes and retro games from other systems to the Nintendo Switch. Now, I originally came across this idea when I was watching Retro Game Core's YouTube channel, and I noticed he was doing remote play and Stadia from an Oak Droid Go Super, which is similar in form factor to the Nintendo Switch. And I started looking to maybe purchase an Odroid Go Super for myself. And then I realized, why am I going to go through all this trouble to buy a new device when I already have something in my house that is capable of doing the same thing? So I decided to make this video to showcase a Nintendo Switch running Android 10 as a retro and roguelike gaming device. And then I realized that my tutorial was getting to be way too long. So this is actually now going to be a series of videos on the Nintendo Switch running Android 10. So this first video is going to be a tutorial on how to get Android 10 running on a modded Nintendo Switch. This guide is going to assume that you have already modded a Nintendo Switch and you already have a compatible model. If you are not sure if you have a compatible model or you have not modded your Switch yet, there is a link in the description on how you can find out if your model is compatible and directions on how to mod your Switch if it is, in fact, one of the Switches that can be modded. Just the obligatory disclaimer, know what you're getting into because like any device that you may be running unsigned code on or using outside its intended purpose, you do run the risk of bricking your system. Just make sure you understand the risks and do your research before attempting this modification. Having said that, I'm actually very excited to show you how to do this, so let's get started. We're going to install this mod on a fresh SD card. So the first thing we're going to do is right click the SD card, click format, and we are going to format it as FAT32. And we're going to click OK to commit. Now that we have a freshly formatted SD card, we are going to head to XDA and download the necessary files. Link to this website will be in the description. First thing we're going to download is the latest version of Hecate with Nix. And you're going to download the first link on the GitHub page. The next thing you're going to download is Lineage. Now you could download either a regular version or an Android TV version. In this video, we are downloading the regular version. Now, I had some trouble clicking the link directly, so I had to right-click and copy the link, 
and then I had to open up a new tab and click paste and go. After that, we were able to download the file just fine. I'm also going to download two more files from this page. One is the G apps. Here we're going to use ARM64. We're going to use Android 10 and we're going to use Pico. This is how we're going to get our Google Play and our G Suite working on this build of Android. The other thing we're going to download is a do not disturb script that will preserve our battery life while we are running Android and keep notifications from interfering with any games while we're playing. That's it for the file, so now let's prep our SD card. Right click the Hecate folder and click Extract All. Go ahead and click Extract. And you can go ahead and do the same with the Icosa folder. The other folders we are going to leave zipped. Now let's go ahead and start moving files to our SD card. Let's start with the Hecate files. Go ahead and drag those files right to the root of the SD card. And we're going to do the same with the files in the Icosa tab folder. We're just going to move them right to the root of the SD card. The last bit of SD card prep we need to do is we need to move the G apps and the alarm disable folders to the root of the SD card. We do not need to unzip them, just move them exactly as they are. All right, that's it for our SD card prep, so let's move over to the Nintendo Switch. Here we are on the Nintendo Switch on the home menu. The first thing we need to do is just boot up the Switch and just make sure we can get ourselves to the home menu. The reason we need to do this is we need to make sure that both Joy-Cons are paired. This is absolutely important prior to the install of Android and you'll see this in the next step. Hold the power button on the top of the Switch. Go to Power Options, and select Turn Off. This will power down your system. Now I'm going to take out my existing SD card, and I'm going to put in the SD card that I just prepared in the last step. I do recommend you use a separate SD card for Android as it'll just make your switch function differently and you may want to go back to using it as a regular switch. Not only will keeping it on a separate SD card prevent any issues happening with your switch games, but it'll also reduce the likeliness of anything unexpected happening while you are running Android. Now let's take off our right Joy-Con and I'm going to put in a Joy-Con jig to force the system into recovery mode. If you don't have one of these Joy-Con jigs, I will provide a link in the description, but I'm assuming if you are watching this guide that you have already modded your Switch, so you probably already have one of these. We're going to go ahead and put the Joy-Con jig in the Switch and we're going to press the power button. It's normal to have a black screen at this time. That means the system is in recovery mode. So let's connect it to the computer and continue over there. Now again, if you have a modded switch, you probably already have this program. But just in case, I'm going to show you where to download Tegra RCM GUI. Link is going to be in the description, of course. So let's go ahead and download the latest version of this program. And... We're going to right click the zip file and we're going to click extract all to make sure that it is unzipped in our downloads folder. Let's go ahead and double click the folder we just unzipped. 
and we're going to go into the subfolder that's in there. We're going to click Tegra RCM GUI, and that will bring us to this interface, and we see a green sign that says RCM OK. That means that our switch is in recovery mode. Let's go ahead and click this folder icon. Now we're going to navigate to our downloads folder, and then we're going to go into the Hecate folder that we unzipped earlier. Open up the bin file and click inject payload. Once we get the check, we know that the payload was sent to our switch. You can now take the RCM jig out of your system, put the Joy-Con back in, and let's continue working on the Switch itself. So here on the Nintendo Switch, you're going to be at the Hecate menu. So the first thing we're going to do prior to installing Android is we're going to download the profile for the Joy-Cons that we paired earlier in this video. Using the touch screen, we're going to go into Nix options, and then we're going to touch Dump Joy-Con BT. Click OK to commit because we are committed now, so let's do this. Once we get the success notification, we can hit OK and we can hit Close. And now we're going to actually install Android. Go to Tools, and our next step is to partition the SD card. Go ahead and click OK here. And you're going to see several different file systems here. What we need to do is we need to allocate a partition for the SD card for Android. So go ahead and slide this up as much as you want it. I'm going to do about 12 gigabytes. And go ahead and click Next Step. You will get a warning notification telling you that it is going to partition the SD card. Go ahead and click Start. You're just going to have to wait a little bit for the system to partition the drive. Once it's done, our next step is to actually flash Android onto the SD card. So go ahead and click Flash Android. The system will ask if you want to continue. Go ahead and click continue. At this point, the system is going to automatically find the files we put on the SD card earlier, and it is going to set us up to boot into TWRP Recovery, which is an Android recovery system. So once you click continue here, it's going to actually boot into the Android recovery mode. Now, once we get into TWRP, it's going to give you a standard disclaimer. Go ahead and click Swipe to allow modifications. Now, this menu can be very intimidating at first if you're not used to it. So just follow along and we'll be fine. Go ahead and click Install. And now we need to get the system to recognize the files on the SD card. So we're going to click Select Storage. We're going to click SD card. And we're going to click OK. Now you'll find the zip files that we put on the SD card earlier. What we're looking to install right now is Lineage. That's the actual Android front end. It's going to ask if you want to confirm flash. We're going to swipe to confirm the flash. Now this process can take a bit of time, so sit back, get your beverage of choice, maybe go to the bathroom, and then we'll come back when the system is done. This has been quite the process. I promise we're almost done. Now when you come back, you may notice some red error messages in the script. These are normal and the system did install properly, so we can actually click back. And we're going to install the other two packages, the G apps 
and the do not disturb package. So swipe to confirm flash, similarly to before, and wait for it to finish. Go ahead and hit the back button one more time, and let's install the do not disturb package. And that's it, we're done. Let's click Reboot System and find out if we boot into Android. This is the moment of truth. Now this initial boot may take some time. Don't panic, it is working properly. Just go ahead and wait for the Lineage logo to pop up. And here we are at the Android start screen, which shows that we are successful. So one of the nice things about flashing Android to the Nintendo Switch is it has full touchscreen compatibility, so you can use either the Joy-Cons or the touchscreen to set up. And that'll do it for this video. I just wanted to get you right to the Lineage front end. Stay tuned for future videos on what we can do with this. If this was helpful at all, please like and subscribe. Bye for now, and don't stop believing.